I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about typography, sidebars, style guides, and more. Let's check it out. First up is Typeface, which is a minimal, customizable typography style sheet. I know that because it says it right here on the web page. Words on a page. You can use less and SAS versions so that you can easily modify it for your own web projects. So let's view the demo and see exactly what this does. Basically, it sets a typographical base. Not sure if that's a word, but I just coined it here on the show, history in the making. And you can see that it sets a pretty nice base for all of your different headlines, your paragraphs, and so on. And it even does other things like lists and block quotes. And you can download it on GitHub or just download it right here uh, for a direct download from GitHub. And it even plays nice with normalize.css. Not a whole lot to say about it, but if you're just building a super simple website, maybe you don't want a big framework like Foundation or uh, Bootstrap, you can just go ahead and use something like this to just get your typography going. Yeah, this is great for people like me who don't feel like doing maths when mm. creating a, a web page. Just like, okay, here's the, here's the base font size, just do all those calculations for me. It is a little bit more complicated than it would seem, so it's nice to have that already done for you. It's just, it's just maths. Yeah. <laughs> who wants to do that? No one. Oof. Next up, we have a plugin called a content generator plugin. This is for the Sketch application of which version 3 was recently released. Now, this plugin is actually really, really neat. If you are inside Sketch, here's a, here's a demo right here. Uh, you'll see it's got a bunch of shapes, and then you click on the menu up at the top. I love that there are animated GIFs in the README right here. Look at that. Oh, okay, look at that. Boom, you got avatars all the way in there. All you have to do is select the items, and you can create a new one. Same thing works for names and also placeholder text. Now, this is uh, super easy to use. You basically just clone it from GitHub into your Sketch plugin directory, and you are good to go. Anyway, again, not a whole lot to say about this plugin either. Just easy, simple to use, and also very useful. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is slide bars. And if you're familiar with kind of the, the hamburger menu, as it's been called, the little three line menu that, Hungry uh, now. <laughs> that slides I'm a menu. Familiar with the hamburger menu. That slides a menu out from the side. We call that the, the sliders, you know, hamburgers. I'd like my like my slide bar medium rare, please. Anyway, you can click this button and it shows a menu on the left side. So it slides out really nicely there. Now we've showed things like this on the show previously, but this one is a jQuery plugin and it uses hardware accelerated transitions. So CSS transitions wherever possible. And it provides a fallback for animate in jQuery in unsupported browsers. So for browsers that don't have those CSS animations, it'll just fall right back to jQuery, so you don't need to worry about it. That is pretty nice. Now, the nice thing about this particular design pattern is that it works on desktop devices as well as mobile devices. And hey, look, there's another one over on the right side here. Look at that, so you can have two on one web page. That's actually a little bit confusing. But anyway, there is an API for this, so you can check out the usage, and then if you scroll down, you can also look at the API. There it is. And if you want to do uh, a couple of different things, if, for example, if you want another button to maybe close it or toggle it, or you know you don't want to follow exactly the same design pattern, you can go ahead and do that. Anyway, uh, pretty neat stuff. And again, it's a really good design pattern to use for mobile or desktop websites. So definitely be sure to check us out. So this is a jQuery plugin for ordering a, a burger? That is exactly right, Jason. Does the API support cheese and, and various other toppings? You've been working on your listening skills. Yeah. Is listening important? It is. How about listening? Yes, that too. 
Next up, we have a node style guide over on GitHub. Now, we've talked about style guides before. This is a style guide example for Node.js. Now, the benefit of using a style guide when you're coding is that no matter who picks up the project, as long as you're following the same style guide, the code is going to look like it's, for the most part, written by the same person. Now, this is an example style guide, so they just have some suggestions about how you're going to want to style your node project. So great suggestions like using two spaces for indentation and not having any trailing white space. Now, if you're using an editor like Sublime Text, you can configure it to strip white space right out of the box. Um, tons of different great suggestions in here saying actually use semicolons. This is a hotly debated topic at times and limiting your lines to 80 characters. Um, anyway, tons and tons of suggestions inside this document. We're not going to go over all of them because that would be a really long and not interesting show. But you can read it. I suggest checking it out. You can find the link in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us in iTunes. We are the Treehouse Show. Next up is this wonderful blog post about improving the payment experience with animations. So if you have a Stripe checkout, this is a way that you can use animations to add a little bit of context to what's actually going on. So here we have the post, and if I click this button, whoa, we're down in the blog post. That's what? pretty cool. That has nothing to do Did with it. Did we this. black out and wake up in the blog post? What just happened? Wow. But if we scroll down here, once again, we're using animated GIFs in this blog post. I love this, uh, this trend of using GIFs to show different functionality. But anyway, it says animations add context. And what that means is when you click uh, a button like this and a little uh, animation makes this panel slide out, it helps you to understand exactly what's going on, how your actions actually relate to the user interface. So that's pretty neat. That's a good way to use animations to actually add meaning to your site rather than just using it to make something flashy. This is another cool way to uh, add some animation that actually, again, has some meaning if you are paying and there's a uh, invalid input in the credit card form, you can actually shake the little input box here using some uh, 3D uh, transforms and animations and actually say like, hey, you know, there's something wrong here and give the user some visual feedback. I think OS X does something similar to this in the password input box window. So it's nice to kind of see this come across on the web. That's very cool. There's another one where they say sleight of hand. Basically, it's saying, you know, you could just show a loading animation, but this is much nicer because it gives the user the impression that uh, things are happening behind the scenes. And uh, you could even do this just entirely as an illusion. So they're saying, we don't actually know when you receive this SMS. They're just basically saying like, hey, you know, something's happening. It kind of compresses time and makes it seem like things are happening faster than they really are. Anyway, there's a bunch of other cool stuff here. Uh, very uh, intelligent blog post, and it's great to see animations being used this way. It's, it's not too often that you see actually uh, animations that add context to what you're trying to say with a web page. Oftentimes, they're just used for kind of flashy uh, pizzazz, I guess you could say. You could say that. Mm -hmm. You know what would really improve the payment experience? What's that? Making things free. That's a good idea. Next up, we have a project called Pour Over. Now, this is a really, really awesome project that is used for sorting, filtering, and querying large collections. And we say when we say large collections, we mean, say, you know, arrays or hashes of items, like lots of them. They're saying over 100,000 items that will still run at 60 frames per second inside of the browser, and you don't have to wait for a database call to render query results. So this is actually a really, really powerful library. The only dependency that it has is underscore.js. So let's take a look at the basic example. So they've got a little bit of data right here. Now they're just starting with a few different items. But remember, this will work with you know, up to hundreds of thousands of items. So the first thing that you do is create a new pour over collection. And then from there, you can filter it based on the different attributes of that collection. 
So right here, they create a new filter for mythology and gender. They're using different mythological monsters. So they have the uh, mythology right up here and then filter also by sex. Then there is a hobbies filter where you can include filters for hobbies. Uh, anyway, you can add a ton of different filters. Uh, you can do unions, sorts, querying,s tons of things like that. Once you have your collection, all you have to do is chain it and then you can call your collection and your filter, give it the filter that you want, and then give it a query for what you are looking for. And then, boom, you are good to go. Now, there are just a ton of different options here. Those were a couple of basic examples. There are advanced views, advanced filtering, just a ton of different things. Um, this is a super powerful library. Now, when you do have hundreds of thousands of objects that you need to render in the browser, this is a great choice for actually getting it done and getting it done quickly. So definitely check it out. Yeah, that's really smart. I mean, if you've ever tried to iterate over a collection in like a hash table or an array or even, you know, more complex data types like a list or a dictionary, it, it still can take a really long time. So it's cool that somebody made something to really optimize that in the yeah. browser. Also, I like the, I like the name of the project because it's kind of a, a pun. Mm. You know, pour over, mm -hmm. like look through. We really poured over uh, this uh, this project, didn't we? Yeah, we mm -hmm. did. All right. Well, next up is uh, this site called CSS Vocabulary, and basically, if you're not familiar with some of the vocabulary for describing CSS syntax, this is the site for you. And even if you're a little bit more advanced with CSS, this can really help you understand the different parts of CSS uh, code. So, for example, if we click on something like a comment, we can say, okay, well, yeah, obviously that's a comment. But uh, what about a statement? Well, a statement is anything like this, and this is commonly confused with a declaration, which is actually only the stuff inside of the curly braces and not the selector. So you can learn a lot about uh, CSS vocabulary just by clicking through these different links here, and it will highlight interactively which parts of the code are actually being described by that particular term. You can also just click on the code if you want to know, you know, what the what are these uh, curly braces? Well, that's a block, and it's also a declaration block. Or if you click on like something like this. Well, that's a value, and these are going to be properties. So this is super helpful if you're just learning or if you're even more advanced and you need to talk about CSS with some of your teammates. Maybe you're collaborating on something and you need to get very specific about what you're talking about, whether it's a selector or a block or declaration or what have you. So very cool stuff. It's very important to know this, especially if you are working on a team. Yeah, that's a really, really cool project. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have a project called Fluid Box. This is yet another light box, but it's actually pretty cool. Uh, if we check it out down here, the main part of Fluid Box is, let's see, we got this picture right here. We click on it, and boom, it does the whole light box thing. So what is so great about this? Well, all you need to do is add data Fluid Box to your link and then you are good to go. Now, the great thing about this is it works responsively. So you can link to a higher resolution alternative without doing anything. Here's a placeholder image that's 200 by 200. Click on that, all right, cool. It fluid boxes up to the width and height of the screen. Uh, so anyway, yeah, quick plugin, not too much to say. It is, uh, it has fluid transitions and it is responsive and it's wonderful. So go ahead and check that out. We'll have a link to it in the show notes. Very nice stuff. Well, that is all we have time for this week. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cypher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us in iTunes. We are the Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile, business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week. Thank you.